So one of the big applications of the derivative had to do with motion. So if we had a function that it was related to the movement of a particle or a certain object, then we can uh, think about the rate of change or the derivative of that uh, particular function as the velocity. And if we're now thinking about a function velocity for that uh, movement and we take another derivative, then the derivative of the speed is going to be now the acceleration. And uh, with that, a lot of uh, problems can be characterized. Now, we want to revise this a little bit more because now we can uh, actually get information the way backwards. So if we have information about the acceleration, we can get information about the speed. And if we get information about the speed, then we can get information about the position. That's one of the virtues of the antiderivative. So if you suppose that an uh, object is going to move with this velocity b of t, the position is going to be found by solving uh, the equation of the antiderivative as s prime of t is going to be the velocity and if you have an initial value for the position. Similarly, you can solve information about the speed. If you have the acceleration function, you consider that the derivative of the speed and you have information about the initial speed. So an example of this will be as follows. So you have a runner A that starts at the point S of zero equals zero and runs with a velocity given by the function B of T equals two T. A second runner begins with a head start of eight, um, let's say eight kilometers or eight meters. Uh, so we can characterize that as S of zero equals eight. And it's gonna run with a constant velocity of two. Uh, this can be, again, uh, two miles per second or, um, yeah, or, or, or two meters per second, something like that. Um, find the positions of the runners for t bigger than zero and determine who is ahead at t equals this uh, time unit. So for this, it, it should be good to consider meters per second. Um, so that's the type of unit that we're going to consider. So let's the position of the runner be st. And uh, because for the first runner, we have f of zero equals zero, then we can um, set an initial value problem for the position and call that s prime of t equals to t with s of zero equals zero. Notice that this is going to be important because this is going to give us the constant of the antiderivative. If we integrate s prime of t is integrating to t or taking the antiderivative of 2t, that's going to give me t squared plus c. Now, because we know that s of zero is zero, then we can substitute in there and we're gonna find out that the constant c is zero. Therefore, the position of the first runner can be given by the function s of t equals t squared. Now for the second runner, we do the same thing, but now our x prime function is gonna be two and our initial position is gonna be eight. So if we consider um, the antiderivative of x prime of t equals two, we're going to obtain that s of t is two t plus c, doing our integration. We do the same process, we substitute s of zero, and so f of zero should be eight, but plugging in here zero, we're gonna get c, so that's going to imply that c is equals eight. And then uh, the, the position for the runner, for the second runner is gonna be st equals two t plus eight. Now, if we compare uh, those two functions with the graphics, notice that this is runner a, this is runner b. Uh, of course, and t equals four, they're gonna get, um, they're going to be in the same position, um, which is distance 16. Um, after that, the first runner that has the, the quadratic uh, movement um, displacement, quadratic displacement, is going to go much more faster than runner B. And so you can see that although initially it was going below, then after four seconds it's going to overtake him. Now let's take a look to another example. In here, we're gonna analyze motion with gravity. So neglecting the air resistance, the motion of an object uh, moving vertically near the Earth's surface is given by the acceleration due to gravity, which is approximated 9.8 meters per second square. Notice that this is units of acceleration, 
which is uh, meters by second square. Now, suppose you a uh, stone is thrown vertically upward at uh, the initial time t equals here, and we go with a speed of 40 meters per second from the edge of a cliff that is 100 meters above the river. Then um, we want to find the velocity b of the object for t bigger than zero. We want to find a position for uh, the object for t bigger than zero, and we want to find the maximum height of the object above the river. So notice that we have information about the acceleration, so we can use that to set up uh, our initial value problem. Uh, we're going to characterize and we're going to make a, a drawing like this. So our initial position in altitude is going to be x equals 100. Um, and uh, the, the object is going to initially move upward. It's going to get a maximum altitude. And then after that is going to fall. Okay. So let's take a look of um, how that will um, come into play. So let's use the board here to uh, set up our problem. So notice that we have B prime of T, which is the acceleration. And we have that that's minus 9.8 meters per second square, which is the acceleration of gravity. Then uh, we can find the antiderivative. So B of T is going to be minus 9.8 dt and so that's going to be minus 9.8 t plus a constant now we do have information about the initial speed the initial speed is going to be 40 meters per second so the way that we do this is okay so at zero this is minus 9.8 times zero plus c which is c but on the other hand, we know that this is 40 meters per second. So that implies that C is 40 meters per second. Okay. And that's going to give me my speed function. My speed function now is minus 9.80 9 plus 40. Now with this, we can also go for the position. So S prime of T can be considered B prime of T. So the speed. And this is going to be minus 9.8 t plus 40. And um, if I want to find s of t, then I need to do the antiderivative of this. Now, doing the antiderivative is going to be minus 9.8 t squared over 2 plus 40 t plus a constant k. Now, similar to what we did before, we do have information about the first position. We know that the height is 100. And so this is a uh, minus 4 point. Minus 4.9 T squared plus 40 T. Plus. Well, wait a minute. I should plug this here right away, right? So we plug the zeros, zero square, 40 times zero plus K. And that's going to imply that K is a hundred. Okay. So with that, uh, we have completely our expression for uh, the speed. And so you notice uh, we have a speed function that is reducing. And uh, finally we get uh, the function for the movement, which is going to be a quadratic function. Now, we can analyze different things here uh, to check when, um, when we're going to get the maximum altitude is the point where the speed crosses and becomes zero, and then it starts becoming negative. So if we check when uh, the trajectory of the speed becomes zero or crosses zero. Uh, that's going to happen around 4.1 seconds. So I know that in 4.1 seconds, uh, we, we had the maximum uh, possible height. So with that, I can plug on um, t four equals 4.1 and, and the height function. 
and we're going to find out that this is 182. So we throw this stone, it reaches 182, then it starts falling. And now the next thing is we want to check when the object strikes the water. So for the object to strike the water, it needs to reach S of t equals zero. So essentially is just replace this S of t for zero and solve the quadratic function in here. Solving that quadratic function is going to land me that this is a 10.2. And that'll be the answer for um, this particular scenario. You've seen this type of problem before. The only difference that we have now is that we can get information backwards from the acceleration up to the uh, distance. But pretty much uh, things like finding where the maximum height is or um, where, um, where is going to um, reach the starting point or the zero point in any of these problems is going to be treated in exactly the same way. Okay, So this is one of the examples of um, applications that we can do with antiderivatives. And this is the end of part three of antiderivatives.